Today on Capitol Hill, presidents of three of the most prestigious universities in the world addressed concerns that universities in the United States are not doing enough to protect students from a wave of anti-Semitic incidents and sentiments on their campuses since the October 7th attack by Hamas on Israel. Just last week, the Anti-Defamation League found that 73% of Jewish college students have experienced or witnessed some form of anti-Semitism since the beginning of this school year alone. CNN's Renee Marsh filed this report. After the events of the past two months, it's clear that rabid anti-Semitism in the university are two ideas that cannot be cleaved from one another. Presidents of Harvard, University of Pennsylvania, and MIT facing tough questions about how they've responded to anti-Semitism on their campuses since the start of the Israel-Hamas war. Since the October 7th Hamas terror attack on Israel, hundreds of students at campuses across the country have held anti-war protests, in some cases using charged language and at times turning violent. I have a friend whose son goes to the University of Pennsylvania. Right now he is physically afraid to go to the library at night. Could you give us your reasons as to why that is true at Pennsylvania, why today a Jewish student is afraid to walk to the library at night? I'm devastated to hear that. Now, the Department of Education has opened an unprecedented number of investigations into alleged incidents of hate on college campuses, Penn and Harvard among them. Can you tell us why the university did not react as quickly as other universities might have or others might have hoped? The notion that Harvard did not react is not correct. From the moment I learned of the attacks on October 7th, I was focused on action to ensure that our students were supported and safe. There have been multiple marches at Harvard with students chanting, quote, there is only one solution, Intifada revolution, and quote, globalize the Intifada. Is that correct? I've heard that thoughtless, reckless, and hateful language on our campus, yes. Do you believe that type of hateful speech is contrary to Harvard's code of conduct, or is it allowed at Harvard? It is at odds with the values of Harvard. The focus of much of the day's questioning, the fine line between allowing freedom of speech while at the same time protecting students who feel threatened by the language. If you are talking to a prospective a uh, student's family, a, Jew a Jewish student's family, right now, could you look them in the eye and tell them that their son or daughter would be safe and feel safe and welcome on your campus? We are absolutely committed to student safety. So all of these university presidents also made it a point to tell the committee that they're also seeing a rise in Islamophobic incidents on campuses. So they are saying that they are going to both work to solving the issues of anti-Semitism and Islamophobia. Um, they also went on to list things that they're doing to make sure students do feel safe, including increased security on campus. Jake. All right, Renee Marsh, thanks so much. Let's bring in the CEO of the American Jewish Committee. And former congressman from Florida, Ted Deutsch, thanks so much for being here. Um, all three university presidents unequivocally yeah. condemned anti-Semitism and the October 7th Hamas attack in their opening statements. They also acknowledged the challenge of fighting anti-Semitism while also being able to protect free speech. Um, what was your reaction to what you heard from the hearing? Well, Jake, free speech is important. It's true. But when free speech and, and acting in the name of free speech allows the voices of some to silence others, allows those marching, chanting violent slogans, calling for the elimination of Israel, calling for terror activities. That's what globalized the Intifada means. That's what from the river to the sea means. When though that type of language silences Jewish students and puts them at risk, then the universities statements about condemning anti-Semitism aren't enough. They need to enforce their codes of conduct. They need to take bold action to keep Jewish students safe. Congresswoman uh, Julia Letlow from Louisiana said she can only imagine how terrifying it is to be a Jew Jewish woman on any of the three campuses. And, and then she shared this story. Take a listen. Just last night, 
A Jewish student from MIT wrote to me that she felt fearful and was forced to leave her study group during her doctoral exams because someone in her group told her that the women at the Nova Festival deserved to die because they were partying on stolen land. There has been no real action to hold anti-Semitic students accountable for their behavior. They should be expelled. What's your reaction? Do you think if somebody expresses the belief that somebody should you know, deserve to die, uh, that, that they should be expelled? I think that the, the universities have codes of conduct, Jake, and included in those codes of conduct is the expectation that students will behave in a way that will not put others at risk, that won't interfere with the education process, that won't silence the voices of others on campus. And when you run around advocating, speaking out in behalf of the horrific terror attack on October 7th, supporting Hamas that slaughtered over 1,200 Israelis and injured thousands more, then there should be action taken. Uh, this isn't, look, the university presidents all today, they all talked about uh, how they, they don't support BDS, an effort to distance the university from, from Israel. The, and they don't support it because they were speaking in the name of academic freedom. Well, there will be no academic freedom. There will be no viewpoint diversity if universities simply allow the voices of those advocating for terror to speak freely on campus without any repercussions. This is a question of fairness. It's a question of whether the universities in the long term can maintain that viewpoint diversity that they claim is the hallmark of higher education. Mm. And if they allow this kind of behavior to continue, it won't be. So this week at Columbia University in New York, a student group uh, that calls themselves the Columbia Social Workers for Palestine promoted a, a teach-in on campus grounds where they, quote, will discuss the significance of the Palestinian counteroffensive on October 7th and the centrality of revolutionary violence to anti-imperialism, see all there, unquote. Now, Columbia has uh, stopped the event from taking place on campus, but just to be clear, this event is calling what happened on October 7th, the barbaric slaughter by Hamas of, of innocent children and women and civilians, grandparents, they're calling it a counter-offensive, uh, and they're celebrating it. And I guess the question is, where is the line between free speech and that speech that should result in some sort of punishment? Because we're, it is a university environment. It is, it is not, it is different uh, in, in ways from just the real world. Well, you know, Jake, you're right. It is different. You know how it's different? It's a place where there should be a free exchange of ideas. And when you allow people to walk around campus spouting statements, calls for violence, calls for not just the destruction of Israel, but support for what Hamas did, which was to massacre Jews, then that free exchange of ideas will never take place. If you don't, if universities don't act to stand up in support of the students, all of the students on campus, then universities in America will be forever changed. This would never be tolerated. This would never be tolerated if people were advocating for violence against any other group, and it cannot be tolerated when people are marching and advocating for violence against Jews. Former Congressman Ted Deutsch, uh, thank you so much, sir. Good to see you. Coming up next to Power.